Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from Driorianos. Since you said you liked the hidden skills so much, which was your favorite? Mine was the Mortal Drop. Well, this is kind of a lame answer. I mean, like, everyone's gonna say the Mortal Drop. I have the same answer. Yeah, I, I honestly, the Mortal Drop was one of the coolest ones. I, I mean, it, it really, it was the most, like, unique, it was the most something that you just don't do normally. Uh, you can't, you have never done anything quite like it in another Zelda game, really, exactly. Um, a lot of the other ones were very fun, though. Uh, one of my, like, the one I use the most, honestly, is the Backslice. But I think if I was going to pick, like, a second favorite beyond the Mortal Draw, I'd probably pick the Jump Strike, because I like how you charge up a jump attack and you kind of swing your sword up and do, like, a miniature combo as you rise up and then you come down and do the Shockwave. I thought that was really cool. Tell me your guys' favorite hidden skills, though, in the comments. Um, Kokiri of Wind asks, What's your favorite enemy in the Zelda series? And, P.S., where did you get that poster behind you? If I don't get one soon, I might rip out my throat. Let's do anything hasty. It's, a uh, I didn't straighten. Well, I was in a rush. I didn't straighten it. No, hope it don't mind or offend you or anything. Um, this is actually like a 25th anniversary Club Nintendo poster that you got for like 400 coins on Club Nintendo. You know, for registering your Nintendo games and whatnot. Um, I don't think they're still available, but you could probably get them on eBay or something. That's the best I could offer you. I mean, tell you, I'm not offering you my poster. Anyway, uh, my favorite enemy is absolutely the freaking Choo Choo's, uh, specifically from the Toon style games, the Wind Waker, Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. I love those little guys. They're crazy. They're insane. They're adorable. A little creepy. A little unsettling. Just, ugh. It's the best freaking character, monster design in the entire series for me. Tell me your guys' though. Rambler77 asks, do you think Majora and or Termina will be included in Zelda Wii U? No. Uh, a freaking question mark, like seriously, just the, the, the symbol. Um, a question mark asks, I was wondering, in your opinion, is it better to play through a Zelda game collecting every upgrade piece of heart and doing every side quest, or is it more fun to play through with not getting any upgrades other than those necessary and getting a minimum of hearts and doing none of the side quests, and just playing and seeing how well you can play on the most difficult setting in minimum health and magic capacity? Or could you do both, one after the other? I don't think that there's any, like, better way to do it. I mean, I guess, arguably, it's better to play through the full game, like, the full experience, really just getting as many items as you can, as you feel like getting, uh, but, and you just collecting stuff and having the full experience that way. But there's no real right or wrong way to play any Zelda game. I mean, they're games made for fun. You're going to play them how you have fun. I never 100%ed a Zelda game when I first play it. Uh, I don't think I've actually 100%ed any Zelda game, since thinking... Uh, that'll come later. Um, I have done minimalist runs on plenty of Zelda games, so, you know, I play them all different ways at different times. It's just, uh, there's no real right or wrong way to do it, even if you only do it one of those ways. It's just, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and they're all fun, they're all fine. Uh, X Darth Wolf, uh, X asks, How do you like the item evolution? Like the hookshot evolving into the claw shot in the newer games? What is your opinion on this? Or, like, say, the fire rod being replaced by fire arrows, etc., arrows, etc., etc., et what is your opinion or preference on this? Um, I think I did an editorial about this recently. I basically, I like the idea of items evolving. I like that idea of uh, taking an old concept and putting a new spin on it to keep it fresh. I also like to see the old items. And I also like to see completely brand new items. I like all three things. Old items, new items, and new spins on old items. They're, they're all good ideas, they all keep things fresh, but they balance... Uh, having a combination of these three things e across the series and even in specific games uh, balances a sense of familiarity and a sense of, you know, originality, which uh, I think is really ideal for the Zelda series, because Zelda fans flip out, in general, um, about not having familiar aspects, but also a lot of people clamor for, like, new, new ideas in the series, and I think that striking a balance, doing a combination of them, is pretty good. I don't like to see all, like, evolved items, but I like to see them in addition to, like, old and new items. It's, it's a good balance. Um... Cameron Halbert asks, What do you think of the upgrade system in Skyward Sword being expanded to include armor in future Zelda games? I think it would be cool if you could upgrade your undershirts, or maybe going from a plain shirt to leather and then to chainmail as Link wears now. Uh, you know, that's, that specifically it sounds nice enough. I don't know if I need to see that exact system specifically, but in general, I love the idea of expanding the equipment system. Um, 
I know this is kind of a trend recently, especially on like Gen Game and whatnot. But referring to uh, Dark Siders uh, two and saying Zelda could learn from things there, from things there. I do think Dark Siders two is excellent, by the way. But I think Zelda games have their own good parts too, aside from what Dark Siders does. Um, but I think that equipment system like Dark Siders is in, not exactly like that. But I think Zelda could take after that and do something like Skyward Sword did, like you said, where you have your equipment and then you upgrade it and change it as the game goes on. I think that is a pretty interesting idea that would be kind of neat. I in general liked Skyward Sword's uh, equipment system a lot because I like the expanded inventory options and whatnot. But I also kind of think back to like Ocarina of Time where you had these different tunics and these different things you could pick, or Link to the Past where you actually did upgrade your armors. I don't know, there's just a lot of different ways of doing it, and I would like to see a fresh, new, more dynamic upgrade system like that. And that would be very nice to see, and that specifically would be an interesting way to do it, but it doesn't need to be that for me, specifically. Um, Juicy J asks, uh, what would you think about seeing both the traditional Zelda save system and the save point system from Skyward Sword in future Zelda games? Specifically, saving at will out in the overworld, but saving with statues in the dungeons. Well, I think that would be pretty alright. I mean, that's essentially the Final Fantasy method. I don't know what the new games are like, but like PlayStation era stuff, maybe even the uh, Super Nintendo stuff, basically had it so you could save in the overworld any time, but when you're in specific areas, be they dungeons or just whatever, um, you had to use save points. And it's a good system, it works, it's, it's functional, and it would work well for a Zelda game with adventuring across the overworld and whatnot. Um, I don't have any particular preference about Zelda save systems, though I like how Skyward Sword did it, I like how other Zelda games do it, I just, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and I've never minded any save system in Zelda in particular, so, uh, you, you know, that's fine, I, just, I don't care. Zelda, um, 72799 asks, Would you like to see a spin-off for Ganondorf, Zelda, not like the CDI games, or, or even Groos, and you could play as, even play as them? Uh, you know, I, I love the idea of Zelda spin-offs with various characters and whatnot. I don't think I'm crazy about most of the existing cast, especially main characters getting their own games. I'm not, I don't care to see that. I feel like their cut stories are addressed pretty adequately in the main games. Uh, Sheik, specifically. Zel Zelda's time as Sheik, perhaps, or a similar character to Sheik, that could be pretty interesting, though. I think, odds, honestly, they should just make their own new characters for the spin-offs, or use more obscure characters that we don't actually get to see a lot of. That's my opinion, though. Adam asks, how do Kokiri kids repopulate if they are kids their whole lives? I always assume that since, you know, like, the Deku Tree made them, he just, you know, like, grows them. They're, like, plant people? That's the best answer I can give you. Um... Merv, like, seriously, there's a question mark here. Uh, he's, he's, he's asking if he's Merv... Um, asks, uh, my question is, in Hyrule Story, it says that at the end of Majora's Mask, the mask was returned to the Happy Mask Salesman. So do you think we will see Majora in a future game? Do you want to see Majora in a future game? To answer that last part, not particularly, because I feel like Majora's Mask's greatness came from its mystery. I feel like if you try to expand on Majora's story, you you kind of just detract from all the things that made it so mysterious and great in Majora's Mask itself. I feel like it shouldn't be expanded on very much. Um... As for seeing Majora again, I don't think it's possible, no, because actually, uh, when Majora, the mask given to the Happy Mask Salesman was Majora's mask, but devoid of the entity or consciousness or whatever you want to call it, inside the mask. It's it's purge. It's not evil anymore. So, nah. It, if he comes back, it has nothing to do with the mask anyway. Caleb Moore asks, in the Wind Waker, Bam Ganon's sword, on, highly in text on it, says the names of the two blacksmiths in Majora's mask. Uh, how is this possible, considering they are on two separate timelines? Um, uh, honestly, this is not something that you should try to put thought into. I can't, I can't tell you why they put Zubora and Gabora's names on in Hylian on uh, Phantom Ganon's sword. That's really strange. It's a hilarious bit of trivia. And maybe you could say that Phantom Ganon, when he was sent to another dimension or placed between dimensions or whatever, he was actually sent to Termina, and uh, they made his sword? That's just such a stretch. It's so silly sounding, but... I don't know, if you want an explanation, there you go, I guess? I don't know. It's just a totally unexplained Easter egg. I don't know why they chose to put that text on the sword over something else. It just doesn't make a ton of sense. Sword related? I don't know. All right, last question. Skyward Orc Arena 9707 asks, In Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures, why is the fourth Link purple? Uh, it's because he's metrosexual. It's because he's kind of feminine. It's because he's evil. It's because he's cool. It's because he's calm and collected. Because they need to figure out a different color to use, and purple just kind of, I don't know, something like it. Alright guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact information in the description, and I'll see you guys later.
A link to Yoshi asks, Axel, help! I lost my Ocarina of Time 3D and I need to use your psychic powers to locate it. Help? <laughs> Eind asks, What do you think about how Tetra became Zelda in The Wind Waker? Personally, I thought one's heritage doesn't make the girl. Well, one's heritage doesn't make the boy, either. 